I think uh, part of the thing that drives me with this venture of the Doric future um, is that you know there's lots of um, you know there's lots of values that we can take um, from our background and our, our culture. Lots of values, lots of insight, um, Evelyn. That you know we hopefully we can pass on to to future generations as well. Mm. Now I was just going to ask you, Evelyn. Um, do you miss life here in the northeast and hearing the Doric accent? Um, the Doric, yes. I mean, I'm lucky in that my mum is is still alive, and so we call her up, you know, um, a few times a week, and and that's just a, a, a great way to to get back into the mother tongue, as it were. Um, and otherwise, it's hopeless speaking it down here where I am in Cambridge <laughs> because you know they think you've landed from Mars or something. But anyway, <laughs> Um, but so that is nice and I mean um, and I can very easily go right back into it and yeah. my two, two brothers and, and you know most of my family speak the Doric um, and they're very very broad I mean one of them still has a family farm and the other uh, works in Ellen and uh, however their kids they obviously understand it, but they don't speak it quite so much. And I think the difference was that, um, you know, when I was at school, especially primary school, we were encouraged to speak it. We used to enter little poetry competitions uh, speaking Doric. And I actually remember there's two poems, and I don't know why they stuck in my head after all these years, but one of them is called Child Psychology, and it went something like this. Child psychology had your tongue twist. Asia bidden when I was young. We are licking the lugger and dumping the rigging. Quicker as weren't than preaching or friggin'. And then there was another poem um, that went something like this. Um, said the fleck to the flea is the grand to be me, to be swacking at bonny to look at. I to lope up and doon in a great muckle tune with the lords of creation to suck at. Said the flea to the fleck, peer we crater the peck and ye ettle we me to come travelling. I to lose our bleed skin fair to your heed, I are fushionless wits are a revelling. So it's funny how, you know, that kind of thing is stuck. But I've also brought, and I know that um, the radio listeners won't, won't see this, but because we're conducting this uh, interview by Zoom, you'll see this, but this is hanging up in my office and it's called the School of Care Nori. And oh, Care Nori lovely, Nori. lovely. And it's written by Flora Gary. So there you go. And, and that sort of is all in Doric and uh, it's kind of nice to look at that every day. Oh, that, that is just that's super, Evelyn, because we are now facing you know, in in this area of Aberdeenshire, you know, it's time to change from the farming days, you know, farming is getting um, bigger and bigger and bigger, and the smaller farm and the crafts are getting less and less and less and less. And, you know, um, in, you know in the last 40 years, uh, oil has pay, played a big part in this area, Evelyn. But, and we, we live in this sort of multicultural society where there's all different languages coming in and people from all, all over the world coming mm -hmm. to this area, and which is great. It's very invigorating, um, mm -hmm. Evelyn. But, it, you, know, you know, it's about how we promote the fact that, you know, if we don't keep speaking the way that we speak, Evelyn, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, how do we try to retain and, and promote the fact that it is so relevant you know so that we can be encouraging our youngsters to to speak and engage in the Doric well it's it's such an interesting question because it also spills over to uh, music and and to, to art and and all sorts of things to dance and 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 I think for me personally it's all about education starting right from the beginning and the fact that you know I was lucky enough to to have this in primary school meant an awful lot to me. I mean, we had the Scottish country dancing, uh, we had the Doric speaking and writing, by the way. And, uh, and as I've traveled around the world, quite literally, I've seen so many territories that have their own particular unique uh, tongues and languages and, and that's unique to a small, small area. And it really can often define, you know, who those people are. And, you know, there's many a territory that is anxiously wanting to hold on to 
yeah. you know, to their, their roots, their history and so on, and the richness of that. But, you know, the whole world is becoming so generic. And mm -hmm. I, I see this as I travel around. You could plant me in almost any place and it, they all kind of look much the same, you know. And, uh, and that's a shame. And I think that it would be wonderful to see a resurgence in our primary schools because that's when it's, it needs to start, you know, yeah. not even before. It's, it's almost too late once, once kids are in secondary school. But to really encourage folk to, to speak the language, to um, be able to read the language, um, be able to, to, you know, know who the writers were, the Jack Websters, the Flora Garys and so on, and to really, you know, see the value of that. And it's something, as you said, right from the beginning, it's, it makes us unique. And the whole UK British Isles, you know, is full of this. It really is, you know, pockets of territories that have just such unique tongues and languages and phrases and all sorts of things and uh and and that's what makes this whole country special you know it really does so and the northeast is is a jewel in that in that whole sort of landscape so i think absolutely you know it 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 just needs to be through education and then we have the choice you know it's given us a choice to to you know, keep it in our system to 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 do something with it as you've done, um, to or like me where you know I can go up and down to to Scotland and and feel completely comfortable being with my family and speaking that speaking the Doric and so on. Um, so yes, there's there's it just opens up choices and that's what we want want to give folk. I know that that's that's a good word. I think Evelyn is choices nowadays because. Yep. I've got a wee bit of burden uh, nowadays for the youngsters, uh, Evelyn. I, I've worked, um, uh, I've worked in, a, in a school uh, as, a help, uh, as a help teacher in a school. So I can see the way that education is going just now. There's so many distractions in, you know, for youngsters in their lives just now. You know, they've got the mobile phone, they've got the computer, they've got the Xbox. You know, they've got every box underneath the sun that they're physically engaged to. And this really is one of the things that drives me most um, yeah. ever, the fact that the youngsters see the world through different eyes than what we do. Yes, you know. And there's, there's pros and cons to all of that, of course. Well, yeah. You know, that yeah. Are, and but what's interesting is that, um, and what's been noticed is that uh, a lot of youngsters, when it comes to language and accents and words, is that they're becoming quite generic. So for example, um, someone who might have been brought up, let's say in East London with a, a strong East London accent, um, their kids are actually not speaking in a Northeast, in, 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 a, in, a, in an East London, uh, with an East London accent. And that's really interesting because they're being fed and listening to so much stuff online. Yeah. Uh, Cancelling out their kind of natural, almost mother tongue, as it were, you know, yeah. the inflections and things like that, and and that's that's interesting. It's a shame, I would say, because it, it that is all sort of contributing to the kind of you know the value of your territory, the value of of, of the choices of words and how the the inflection and and all of that sort of thing, the speed that that. that we, we speak. I mean, I've noticed that when I look back on some of the, the early, early TV or video footage or whatever, you know, when I was in my 20s, I spoke at such a rate, you know, <laughs> really fast. I'm thinking, blimey, what was the rush? And now I speak much more. But that was obviously the pace, you know, that, that was happening, um, that naturally, you know, was, was spoken. And, uh, and because I've had to slow down since being in, in England, and I've been in England an awful long time, um, but in order to be understood, um, in order to, to basically speak English, but with a Scottish accent, because that's what I'm doing right now, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, that's changed the pace then of, of, um, of uh, how, you, how you speak. So lots of things come into play depending on where you are. Yeah, that is, that's so interesting, Evelyn, because I sometimes think that we are in this modern world that we're just going too fast. We're mm -hmm. just going too fast. Modern technology, especially for youngsters, is drawing them in 
you know, to this mobile phone that they seem to have to Twitter and tweet and, yeah. and yeah. TikTok. And it's like I'm, spinning I'm, plates, isn't it? It's like the spinning. Media. What is the next? What is the next thing that they're homed into on their phone? You know, and I often wonder, you know, thinking about our sense of identity and our culture, um, Evelyn, you know, we know where we've come from. We, we know our background. We know our culture, you know, mm. because um, it, it, it was... It was hands on. We were out there in the fresh air, you know, watching our dad milking the coo, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. You know. That's true. Yeah. And then before that, there was the 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 the, the, man, the men working in the, the land with a horse, the yes. horse. You know, you know, and we've moved on to such an extent, Evelyn. You know mm -hmm. that I just wonder the how the youngsters of today will see their identity in the future. You know. If, yeah, you know, if I, I, yes, through this medium that they're kind of using with social media um, and, and looking intensely into the phone. And there's nothing wrong with that, Evelyn, but I just wonder how it will pan out, do you think, in the future for them? Well, you know, that still has to be revealed, obviously. And, and but I suppose, you know, when you think about it, if we think about our parents and the sort of things that we then had, you know, as the kids when calculators came in, and then I remember leaving school, and I think just when I left school, the year after, computers then came into schools and you know and so on and so forth um it's, it's things like um uh, uh piano keyboards you know were were in in the music rooms um well as opposed to loads of recorders and and singing books and stuff like that so things do change things do move on um and and i think we do have to embrace that uh, yeah we, there's no way we can fight technology now. No. We've, no. we've got to really <laughs> see the positives of it, and we're yeah. using technology right now in order to conduct yeah. this. Yeah, system. that's true. So I think that what this whole lockdown period has emphasised was actually what are the things that are important to us. Yeah. Um, and we know that communication is important. We know that face-to-face -face communication is important as well. Yeah. And, you know, whilst there's that need to have, you know, connection with other people, there's always going to be a need to say something. And, yeah. uh, and therefore, language will always be really important. And which makes it all the more important to understand, you know, where we've come from and, and the richness of something like Doric. Um, and it goes back to this unique thing. It, 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 and, and the choice, you know, it really does. And just the curiosity as, as regards to, you know, where, where we're from. Where um, we're from, indeed, Evelyn, yeah. Because yeah. I found that um, lockdown period very interesting, although quite challenging because um, I'm in a, a shielded household. Um, so, um, and I'm still actually shielding yet, uh, Evelyn. So right. I, I found it quite challenging because being a, a videographer, I mean, my, my thing was to be able to get out into the community and to be able to communicate and to interview people. Um, so I felt that was a, a, a bit of a loss for me because I wasn't able to do it. But what I found is I found a little outlet because we live next, next to the North Sea mm -hmm. um, and very close. It's just right on my doorstep. So oh. I went, um, basically, I went hiking, walking along the coastline every day, Evelyn, um, because I, I couldn't connect with people, you know, and I'm not very, really good with modern technology. So um, the, this concept, uh, you know, this Zoom thing and everything is quite frightening for my age group. Um, <laughs> but what I did find, Evelyn, and then that's going back to our, our roots again, what I did find was a huge comfort and, and I found a way forward because I actually got stuck. I was stuck, I froze in this state of lockdown thinking, where am I going in life? You know, I'm in a shielded household. I've given up my job to protect somebody in my household, you know, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm at dire, I'm a bit at dire straits here. Yeah. So my, what I did, Evelyn, is I connected heavily with outside, with, yes. with the environment, with walking along the coastline, with the land and the sea, it brought me right back into my roots and into my culture. And I thought about that and I pondered on it and it indeed gave me a sort of strength. Yes. It 
gave me a sort of strength, Evelyn, because I really was a very low ebb in my life at the beginning of lockdown. Mm. And, you know, I think this going back to culture and background, you know, where we've come from, our connection with the land, you know, and the values that we've received from our, you know, our background and upbringing, which, you know, we can all in different, our different cultures have, that was my saving grace, Evelyn. It was my saving grace. That's so interesting, and it's really good to hear that 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 you know literally something on your doorstep, you know, yeah. is the medicine that's needed. And I think you're yeah. so right there that it's given us a chance to really see what is right under our noses. And I think yeah. what's so brilliant about the Northeast is that it's got everything. I mean, really, it's got a bit of everything. You've you've got the countryside, you've got the dikes, you've got the, the wildlife, you've got the sea, you know, you've got the ruggedness, you've got the, the more refined bits, you've got the beautiful gardens and the castles, you've got the ruins, you've got the city, you you know, you've just got everything. And to to not just embrace that and think, well, you know what? life really isn't so bad you know when when you can just stand out there and look and i think going back to the technology thing again is that it is as you say easy for us all i mean i see this umpteen times or certainly not right now but as you travel around in the airports and everybody is looking down 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 onto a a, 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 a mobile phone or a computer or something but the heads are down you know the shoulders are stooped and and everybody's looking down at something or another and mm -hmm. this whole lockdown period has allowed us to look up look out look across look from side to side look backwards everywhere you know what i mean and it's got our whole physically our whole bodies up and rising again and and just noticing um, what is absolutely right there in front of us for a change and, and that really has to be the best medicine of all. You've said more than no. I ever dreamt that you would be you would be able that we would be able to cover Evelyn. We'll just say it cheerio for the new. Cheerio for the new and you'll have had your tea. <laughs> yeah and we'll and at some point we will zoom back together because zoom you back. know what you. I've got all my questions to ask you, Evelyn. If that's okay. Okay. Thank Keep you. Keep in touch, Evelyn. Thanks very much, and all the best. Keep safe.